Well, good morning and happy Monday, church family. I am excited to bring you today's hope for the day and really cherish this time that we have together. I don't know about you, but I am seeing a light at the end of the tunnel for those that are anxious and eager to get back to church. We are having planning sessions and we are talking and praying through those right now. And if you're not ready to come back at all, you do not have to worry because we are going to continue doing online devotionals as we are today and also our online services. Those are not going away. So we will be connecting with you wherever you are. But there's a word that has been popping up no matter where you are in the virus or even where you are with all the violence in the world. The one word that I hear from a lot of people and myself included is the word anxiety. Now, I've talked a lot about anxiety in the past, and I've confessed before that I have been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. And I know a lot of people might think as a pastor, how is that possible? Because I have so much faith in the Lord, but it is an honest and true thing that, that happens. When Jesus says, do not worry, the worry is going to come, but he is referring to the place of worry, to stay worried. So it's okay to recognize and say, I do have anxious thoughts, but what do we do when these anxious thoughts come? And so today for that hope for the day, I wanted to, to look at the example of David. And I'm going to go today one, to Psalm 139, and I'm going to really camp out in verses 17 to 22. So if you want to grab a Bible, but I'll be reading from mine as well. And today I'm reading from the English Standard Version. But David was a great example of anxiety. And I think the first thing we need to recognize is why am I anxious and where does the anxiety come from? So listen to what David says. Now, Psalm 139 is a very familiar passage. It starts off and I'll just kind of share a little bit. It says, Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know everything about me. You know when I sit down and when I rise. You search out my path and my lying down and you are acquainted with all of my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, you already know what I'm going to say. I mean, it's talking about obviously the God creating us and, and David is claiming that you already know everything about me. And you know even the comings and goings that I have. In fact, in verse 7, where shall I go from and from your spirit, where shall I flee from your presence? Because if I ascend to heaven, you are there. I mean, wherever we go, God is right there with us. And then this is the verse that's very familiar. Um, For you formed my inward parts and you knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So he goes on to set all this up, you know, knowing and claiming, confessing, that God who made us, loved us, made us wonderfully, knows everything about us, even the number of hairs on our head. Now then here's 17. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I could count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and I am still with you. Now listen to this, verse 19. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God. Men of blood, depart from me. Those men, those enemies, they speak against you with malicious intent, and your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with complete hatred. I count them my enemies. So right now he's like, Lord, you know, if you would just do something about those people, those enemies that speak against you that aren't practicing love. And I know this could apply to anything in our world today. Lord, if you would just take care of those violent people out there and do something about those looters, if you would just take care of, doesn't matter what side you're on, those Democrats, those Republicans, wherever. But how often do we say, Lord, these are people against you, whoever they are. If you would just take care of them. But listen to the switch. David says in verse 23, he goes from external to internal. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there is any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So he goes from 
pretty much fussing and cussing about all of the enemies, all those that are against God's word. And then he says, but search me, O God. So in other words, it's this humble place of Lord, nothing changes until I change. And I think for me, this is my where my hope comes from, is to know why am I anxious? Why do I get anxious? And it's all about me and my thoughts. We already know that God's thoughts are better than our thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways. And we also know in Romans 12 too, where Paul says that do not be conformed by the patterns of the world, but be transformed by the patterns of your mind. And then you will know God's perfect and pleasing will. This mind is a powerful thing and God can transform the thoughts, going from an outward appearance to an inward. And so what is our part? Well, what are we allowing to come into our mind? It's basically what goes in, what is what comes out. And let's, let's be honest, are we reading God's word and just filling our minds with the words of truth and love? Or are we spending a lot of time on the outward, on the intake of the phone? And that's one of my confessions. How much are we consuming with news feeds and news media and opinions of everybody else? We were not designed to be attached to the phone, ringing in our back pocket, where consistently we are reading everyone's opinions from the entire human race. And so search me, oh God. Search me. What am I allowing to come into my mind? Because maybe that's why I'm anxious. God says instead that if we focus on Jesus and abide in Jesus, then we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. So my hope for the day, my encouragement to all of us, myself included, is before I go to bed and when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I want to do is focus on God's promises and his truth. And the other thing I was thinking about is that as we look back and reflect on where we've been for the last few months, and we've talked about this before, but make a list of gratitude. You know, Paul writes to the Philippians in 4, 8, he says to focus on what is true, what is praiseworthy, what is excellent, what is pure and what is noble. You think about these things and then the peace that will come that passes all understanding. So what have been the praiseworthy things? What have been the excellent things that have happened among all of the confusion and anxious thoughts? I know for me, of course, we've had great time with my family. I'm implanting a lot of vegetables. You've seen that probably on my updates. So I've had that. I've had a great focus on my recovery. And as soon as those anxious thoughts have come, at the beginning of the quarantine, I used my tools in my recovery and I went straight to God's word and we cast out those anxious thoughts. So today, what can you do as you ask God, search me, test my ways and show me what's in me that I can change so that your word will permeate my thoughts. So let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much because your ways truly are better than our ways. And so Lord, I pray as we search our, our hearts today, Lord, that you would indeed show us how we can make a change with your help, change in our ways so that we can see things with truth and love the way that you see them. So Lord, help us in this area because we know we need you. We thank you, Lord. We pray for peace in our hearts first and then peace around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, it's good to see you, church. Can't wait to see you in person. If you need anything, again, contact We Care either by email or phone, and we'll be glad to get in touch with you. We love you. We miss you. God bless you.